I'm going to tell you everything you need to know before buying the Misc Reliant Core and we're starting right now. How can Misc help you today? Systems on. Welcome to a Star Citizens Buyer's Guide. What's up citizens, this is Subliminal here and today we'll be discussing the features, functions and benefits of the Reliant Core. And we'll compare those features amongst competing ships so you can make an informed buying decision. In this review, I'll cover a brief overview, take a tour, compare stats, go over its default weapons and components, as well as my recommendations, review pros and cons, and finish up with my thoughts on the Reliant Core. If this is our first time meeting, welcome. My name is Subliminal and my passions are Star Citizen and content creation. Be sure to check out some of my other reviews in this series and consider subscribing. Remember to check the pinned comment below for corrections, afterthoughts, and updated loadouts. New citizens, be sure to use my referral link on screen or in the description to reserve your 5,000 Alpha UEC in the Persistent Universe. No pledge necessary. With that out of the way, let's get to it. Let's find out a little bit more about the Reliant Core. The Core is a light freighter developed by Musashi Industrial and Starflight Concern, or MISC for short. It is a versatile and agile entry into the intro level ship market. The series was introduced in 2946 as a follow-up to the Freelancer design. Like the Freelancer, the Core integrates a variety of Xeon technologies and design aesthetics including a vertical flight mode. The Core is the base model of the Reliant series and is a mini hauler with additional speed and dogfighting capabilities not found in a dedicated freighter ship. It is specifically designed as a multi-purpose ship and has a larger carrying capacity than many ships in its class. MISC is a human-based manufacturer on Saisei in the Centauri system. MISC is known for their especially ergonomic factories, with every spacecraft piece assembled robotically with expert precision. MISC is the only human spacecraft corporation to sign a Lend-Lease Agreement with the Xi'an, agreed to in a closed-door conference in 2910. The MISC Reliance series is a starter ship line that utilizes advanced Xi'an designs, features broad, sleek wings, omnidirectional thrusters, and a fully articulated two-seat cockpit that supports horizontal and vertical flight modes. The fighter variant Tana, broadcast variant Mako, and the research variant Sin are also available. As of today, the Core is available for sale and upgrade on the Pledge Store for $65. The Core is available for sale at Lorville's New Deal for around 750 Alpha UEC. However, it is not available for rent, now that you know a little bit more about the Reliant Core, let's take a tour. This buyer's guide is brought to you by my Locations of Sand collection over on Displate. Any purchase made supports the channel and for every purchase, Displate will plant a tree in places that need it most. Click the link in the description. If you'd like to skip this tour, the timestamp is on screen and in the description. The port side wingtip is equipped with a Reliant Toshima turret. The mount holds two size two laser repeaters. The wing of the Core does not have the missile launcher pod found on the Tana. Under each wing, there is a size 1 gimbaled laser autocannon and two size 2 missiles. This crew pod that is shaped like a Keurig filter is rumored to be ejectable in the future. The starboard side is identical to the port side. Around the back, we have access to the cargo hold. Let's head inside. The cargo hold of the Core is big enough to fit six SCU of cargo or a Grey Cat PTV. Heading towards the flight deck, we have access to components. Let's hop in the co pilot seat. It features a fully functional MFD and gives the co pilot remote access to control one of the wingtip turrets. Now for the pilot seat. It looks like the HUD has not yet been updated to the new building blocks UI just yet. Here we have six MFDs and a radar. The 
The Core has three flight modes, landing gear down, horizontal flight, and vertical flight modes. Now that we've taken a tour, let's see how it compares to other ships you might be considering. For comparison, I have selected 10 ships, one starter, eight competitors, and one likely upgrade from the Reliant Core. The Google Sheet document with the data is linked in the description. The Core weighs in at over 38,000 kilograms and ties in third place. It fits in at 14.5 meters in length and ties in first place with the Reliant Tana. This should be taken lightly due to the exceptional width of the Reliant series. It totes six SCU of cargo space and comes in fourth place. Has a max crew size of two and ties in second place. It carries 583 quantum fuel units and ties in last place with most of the ships on this list. It walks by with an SCM speed of 166 meters per second and ties in 8th place with the Tana. It strolls by gingerly with a max speed of 1150 and ties in 7th place. It steers in with a maximum yaw pitch of 65 degrees per second and ties in 5th place. It boasts a total HP of just over 8,000 and ties in second place. It blasts its way in with a default pilot DPS of almost 1,500 and takes second place. The Core does not have a manned turret, as well as every other ship on this list except the Cutlass. It has a total missile payload of over 15,000 and ties in sixth place with the Avenger Titan. And the Core is available to purchase in game for almost 750,000 off the UEC and ranks in second place and seems to be a great value. But let's talk about its stock weapons and my recommendations. On each wing, the Reliant Core has two gimbaled size 2 weapons, a gimbaled size 1 hardpoint, and two size 2 missiles. The wing tips have one Reliant Toshima turret each. The turret holds two size 2 CF-227 Badger laser repeaters. If you prefer energy weapons, I would keep these. However, I will swap them out for two size 2 Scorpion GT-215s. One Scorpion is size 2, does 21 damage, times 900 RPM for a total of 318 DPS and a 2100 meter range. With ballistics, ammo should be taken into account. It has 8,000 rounds that would deplete in 533 seconds of continuous fire. Under the wing, the Corey comes equipped with a gimbaled size 1 M3A laser autocannon. I'd keep the gimbal and replace the M3A with a Yellow Jacket GT210. One Yellow Jacket is size 1, does 16 damage times 800 RPM for a total of 213 DPS and a 1700 meter range. It has 7,200 rounds that would deplete in 540 seconds of continuous fire. In 3.9, it seems as though there are a lot more viable weapons out there. I have decided to go with ballistics to conserve power and heat. As you'll see later when we talk about components, this is very important for the Reliant series. However, if you're considering using energy weapons, I would go with the CF series. For missiles, the Reliant Core comes with two size 3 missile racks and two Ignite 2s each. I like cross-section missiles, so I'd swap them out for Strike Force 2s. They are size 2, cross-section, do almost 3800 damage, have a 2.41 second lock time, and a 4800 meter lock range. Another viable option would be to add two Rattler 2s here instead. Now let's talk about the standard components and my recommendations. The stock loadout of the Core, according to Games, can't support the power draw of its components, so let's take care of that first. The standard power plant on the Core is the Size 1 Grade 3 Power Bolt. I recommend swapping it out for the Size 1 Grade 1 JS300, with almost 3700 max power generation per second and a 10 second power uptime. This will add another 1600 power per second that can be drawn and reduce the time it takes to reach that max power draw down to 10 seconds. For coolers, it comes with two Size 1 Grade 3 Arctic Storm coolers. My recommendation for the coolers is to pair the cooler with the fastest cooling rate and the cooler with the fastest power up time. This will be the Ultra Flow and Zero Rush. This will bring its maximum cooling rate to 678,000. In this configuration, the Zero Rush will start applying some cooling quickly and the Ultra Flow will add to your overall cooling rate. 
For shields, it has two size one grade three web shield generators. My recommendation for the shields in 3.9 is to pair the best overall size one shield, the FR-66, with either a Palisade for slower ships or a Mirage for more nimble ships. And Sakore is slow as f we'll go with the Palisade. This way, the FR-66 can start adding to the shield pool quickly while the Palisade takes its time. The idea is that a ship like the Kore needs to be able to stay in the fight longer because escaping to charge shields may not be a viable option. And lastly, the QT drive it comes with is the Size 1 Grade 3 Rush. This drive isn't capable of going from PO to Microtech, so I would swap it out for the Voyage. It's Size 1, Grade 2, has a 158 megameter per second quantum speed, a 5.1 second spool up, and a 10 second cool down time. With the Core's quantum fuel capacity, it can make the trip from Port Alizar to Microtech without stopping to refuel. If you don't have around 160,000 Alpha UEC to spend on all this at once, I would buy them in the following order. After you watch the rest of the review, check out my link to my Urkel.games loadout in the description. Here you can find the prices and locations on where to find these items in the verse. These are just my recommendations and aren't the best for every situation. If you have any questions, comments, or recommendations, leave them in the comments below. Because Star Citizen is constantly changing, my recommended loadouts can change any time. To stay up to date, head over to the Subliminals channel Discord where I store my updated loadouts. I am building a community there for citizens who want to discuss ships, loadouts, components, weapons, and more. Click the link in the description. Alright, let's weigh some of its pros and cons. For a starter ship, having 6 SCU of cargo space and room for a Grey Cat is excellent. It has plenty of room for mission boxes. It has a co-pilot seat with turret access. Having the flexibility for the co-pilot to take control of one of the turrets makes for great gameplay. It has a lot of hull HP, so it can sustain damage for a long period of time. Its potential damage output with 4 gimbaled size 2 and 2 gimbaled size 1 hardpoints is devastating to the opposition. I would say its cons are, it's ridiculously slower than the competition. For perspective, it's barely faster than a Cutlass Black. Its size is an issue. Unless you are facing the enemy, your cross section is massive. Don't get caught from the side. Compared to some of its competitors like the Titan and 300i, it doesn't have a bed or any type of amenities. One particularly annoying issue with the Reliant series is that if the ship is in vertical flight mode or doesn't have its landing gear down, you can't exit your seat to walk around the cabin. To add insult to injury when quantum jumping the ship defaults to the vertical flight mode. When component degradation comes in, I would like to be able to have me or my co-pilot fix components during the 3-6 minute jump time. Alright, so Subliminal, what are your thoughts? For me, the Reliant Core was like a moped. It was all fun and games until your friends caught you riding one. Now that the Corey's hull HP has been doubled, size 1 missiles can be gimbaled, and the Corey comes stock with two of those Tashima turrets, it's no longer the weird kid on the block. It's a legitimate contender as a starter and a fighter. Now it's got some faults. I personally think it's ugly, and it's about as slow as that moped that I mentioned in my analogy earlier, but I think it's a good enough balance. None of the faults are really anything you can cry about. After all, if the Corey was as fast as the Gladius, it would be dominating the star system. But the big question here is, has the Corey been moved up to be a contender to the Avenger Titan and the 300i as the best starter ship? The only thing I wish it had was additional cargo space. It seems like there is almost enough room to add another layer of SCU to the cargo grid. This would double its capacity and I would recommend it to any new player who's looking to get into trading. Now one could argue that even with an additional 6 SCU, it's still not a viable ship to run cargo. And I guess I'd have to agree, but I'd still like to see it added. My conclusion is that the Corey is not the best starter, but certainly far from the worst. If you think it fits your playstyle, it's certainly a good option to look at. But if you like a more nimble ship with two extra SCU of cargo in exchange for less firepower, then look towards a 300i or Titan. Those are my thoughts, let me hear yours down in the comments. If you're a new citizen or even considering becoming a citizen, use the referral code on screen and in the description to reserve your 5000 Alpha UEC in the Persisting Universe. If you've enjoyed this review, check out more of my content. If you'd like, there are six ways to help support the channel. Number one, you can smash that like button. Number two, you can share this content with someone who may enjoy it. Number three, you can check out my locations of Stanton collection over on Displate. 
Number four, you can subscribe and turn on notifications by clicking the circle here. Number five, you can become a channel member by clicking the join button below. And number six, if you're feeling generous, consider becoming a patron. Some of the pledge perks can be seen here, including desktop versions of my locations of Stanton collection available to all patrons. If not, your viewership is greatly appreciated. Until next time, citizens, I'll see you in the verse.